Hey, good morning everyone. Happy Monday. Um, after Thanksgiving, hope you all didn't stuff too much and you still have room in your your uh, spandex or elastic waist pants. But good morning. Um, great to be into the Christmas season now. I even got my holiday mug, right? Gotta have a rain. I call it a moose mug, but it's really a reindeer. But anyhow, good morning. Today I'm going to talk about, and actually I think this whole week, we're going to focus a little bit on um, vision and plans. Because as we get to the end of the year, that's part of what we try to do. We try to create a plan, we try to create a direction, and look at what God wants us to do for the next year. It's kind of like being prepared. And what I'm going to tell you is, I've seen a lot lately where there is no plan, there is no vision, and people just kind of wing it. That's really not a good place to be as a Christian. We really need to be, and I know some people say, well, it's as God leads, and yeah, okay, I agree with that, but there's also, he calls us to have a plan and to have a vision and to follow through. Because see, a lot of times what happens, girls, is we're not the only ones impacted by this plan that we come up with. An example is we're getting ready to do a women's conference at Lakewood Baptist Church, which is a church I attend. And it's part of a bigger vision that God has given. So God gave me a vision for the women to teach them, empower them, and lift them up, train them to be leaders so that they can go out and effectively lead and touch lives because isn't that what we're supposed to do according to Titus we're supposed to be training people up we're not supposed to just throw them out there and let them flop around like fish out of the water we're supposed to be there encouraging them and guiding them and I have that blessing of being trained as a leader through the the church that when I accepted Christ and plugged in I was trained to be a leader I went through their leadership program because I knew God was calling me to something. Good morning, Kim. And what happened is through that, at that time, God had called me into a place of leading the children's ministry. And that's what I did for 11 years. And then God, after that, shifted what he had the calling for. And that kind of puzzled me because I thought, ooh, I already know what I'm good at. I know what I'm called to do. And... God said, no, I want you to go here now. And that was to lead women. And that's where Thrive started. And it's been, it wasn't called Thrive originally because I've been doing this for many years. But as it's been birthed and as God called it to become more and he put a vision for me. And then he created the plan that I follow. So it's real simple, but we forget and we try to you know, what do they call it? They throw the plastic against the wall and see if it'll stick. And what happens is there's chaos around it. There's people that get mad, they get offended because they're not being led in the direction. You're like just assuming they're going to jump at what you say. And it doesn't work that way. See, God is organized. You've got to remember that. God is organized in what he does. That's why when we look at things that happen during services, there's still got to be an organization to it because God is not a God of confusion. But he also wants us to have a plan. And the scripture I have, sorry, I'm going to read it off the monitor um, just because if I spin around, it's kind of rude because the Bible's on the back too. Um, and that was a whole other conversation this week because I unpacked my total office. Everything is open. Everything is put where it belongs. And I found a Strong's Concordance of vines and one other one and the funny part was I was going to give them away because I thought those are big and clunky but I realized at some point we're not going to have these tools on the internet to search for they're going to be shut down on us so I need to have it so I could still search so I still have them anyhow Habakkuk yeah I'm going to Old Testament today chapter 2 verse 2 and this is one that I heard and it was kind of a confirmation I went to a, a training when did I go Sometime in November, mid-November, drove out to Kentucky and, and went through a training there. And it was a beautiful time, but they kept bringing up Habakkuk 2 too. 
And I thought, oh my gosh, it is written that we're to have a plan, that we're to have a vision, that we're to create this and not just randomly blurt out and, and go do stuff. We're supposed to have some kind of a structure, some type of plan. Habakkuk 2.2 2 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. I don't know what version. Oh, that's King James. Let me shift the version. Hold on. Don't go nowhere. Okay. Sorry about that. I want to get an easier version because King James sometimes is hard to understand. Okay. New King James says, write the vision and make a plan on tablets. Oh, I said the wrong. Okay. Another that was right. That he may run who reads it. See, God's telling us, girls, <coughs> that we need to... New, Okay, New Living Testament. I just looked at that. It says, write my answer plainly on tablets. NIV says, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets. ESV, which is English Standard Version... This is just some different translations for you. He's, the Lord answered me and he said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he may run who reads it. It's just about making it plain, making it clear, so that you have a direction to run. You see, what happens sometimes is we get excited about whatever it is we're doing. And we forget that... All these other people may be impacted by it. And then we start demanding them to do things and telling them they need to help and telling them this. And, and girls, we can't operate like that. Because see, what we don't understand, if we don't have a plan and if we don't have vision, then we have chaos. And that chaos brings about those emotions and feelings that are not of God based and justifiably so in the people that it offended so why would we knowingly run around in chaos when it's not that hard to create a plan girls I challenge you December is a great time to get your plan together to think about what next what is God calling me whether it's in your family in your business, in your ministry, you need to be planning. <coughs> it is biblical to plan. An example, we're getting ready to do our Thrive Conference. Conference isn't till March, but because the vision for this is 300 women coming together in Rock Hill, South Carolina, with a guest speaker in there, full worship going on, all these other plans for that day. It's a full day. We need to have a plan. See, because, number one, we couldn't pull off a women's conference if we didn't have a plan. Number two, we couldn't get the meal delivered if we don't have a plan. We couldn't get the worship team to show up if we didn't have a plan. We wouldn't have a guest speaker if we didn't have a plan. Oh, girls, I witnessed last night total chaos because there was no plan. And it broke my heart because the message was so powerful and amazing. Yet because there was chaos, the message didn't go to everybody it needed to go to. People that joined in and then was like, what the heck is this? And got off. And left and said, nah, you know, I'm busy tonight. We don't need that. We watched people being offended and hurt because they were commanded to do something they didn't even, weren't even aware that the agenda included them doing something. 
And the sad part is it came down to no vision with a plan. Because see, it all happened like, oh, all of a sudden, hey, let's do this. But they forgot to ask everybody that was part of the this. Girls, plan and vision is of God. He does not want us operating in chaos. He wants us to thrive in what we're doing. But we cannot thrive if we don't have a clear vision. If we don't have a clear plan. We become fish out of the water, flopping around. And nobody has a clue how to even step up and help you. What is your vision? What is your plan? Have you talked to God about it? Have you asked him about it? Has he let you see a clear vision of what it is that he sees for you? These are great questions and they're questions for you to take to God and ask him. See, when we were planning the conference and when the conference was brought to light, I took it to the pastor and said, Pastor, here is the vision. Does it fit here? He was as giddy as a school kid in a candy shop and ready to go. And he's like, let's go. Set the date. Pick a date. Go. You go do what God has called you to do. And I went. We created a plan. We got sponsors. I had people stepping up that I never expected in Robin's little world would step up and say, awesome, why don't we do this too? Can't we bring this in? Yes, thank you. Would any of that happen if there was no vision? No. What is your vision? What do you see God having you do? And are you creating a plan? Have you ever created a, a vision board? Something that shows the plan. Let me grab... This is an old one that I did. There we go. <clears throat> this is an old one. And you're going to see it backwards only because uh, the way the camera goes, right? So here's an old one. And all it is on my particular one, there's outside and there's outside. So there's some pictures in this, right? But there's a lot of words on mine. And this is one from, what year was this? This is 2015. Last year my vision was heal my back, right? So in here, I have, this is 2015. We built our home in 2016. 2016? Yeah, I think we moved in last year. No, we moved in in 2015. We're in... Oh, goodness, what year are we in, girls? Okay, 2015, we built the house. My vision, you can do it, and a home. We built our home because we had a vision to have it done. We had a plan. Sleep better was one of mine with an adjustable bed so that you can adjust the feet and the head to make sure that there was no strain on the back. We bought it in 2015. Uh, let's see. What else is on here that's a really good one? And my goals, my goals for 2015 for to be inspired, refreshed, truly radiant, simple, well, at my healthy best, and look fabulous and look beautiful. See, so what is your plan? Now my plan for 2017 is going to be a little bit different because, and I'm getting ready to create that in the section of the iBloom Planner. If you guys want this thing, this thing is amazing. It's just really cool planning. I didn't use this. This is the first year I bought it, and I never did anything with it. I've got it again this year, and trust me, it's getting filled. So, with that, 
what is your plan and what is your vision? So going back to Habakkuk 2, chap chapter 2, verse 2, write the vision and make it plain on the tablets that he may run who reads it. It's a call to action. Write your vision down. And we're going to talk about that. I think we're going to spend some time this week because it's a real good time as we enter into the last month of the year to be talking about vision and our plan and the direction. Whether it's in your business, in your ministry, or in your home, you have to have a plan. You have to have a vision. And I want to challenge you today, number one, if you know your vision, excuse me, if you know your vision, write it down. If you've already created that plan in your head, write it down. And if you don't know, get on your knees. Ask God, what is the vision for you in your life, in your ministry, and in your business for 2017? God, what do you want me to do? And he will show it to you. But girls, it's time to be bold and stand in the faith that we have and live what we believe. What do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? Do you believe that the Word of God is the living truth? The same yesterday, today, and forever. Start living it. It's time for you to step up and be bold and live what the Bible tells you. And right now the Bible's saying, what is your vision? What is your plan? Have you written it down? All right, you got a challenge for today. Let me know how you do with it. I'd love to hear what your vision is. If you want to share it here, that's fabulous, or in a private message. But I'd love to hear what your vision is, all right? God bless you. Go get them. Bye-bye.